will come on and give the Lord glory and praise in this place today. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. I sought the Lord and he heard me. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. We thank God for his grace and for his favor and allowing us to share once again in the Sunday morning worship here at the Union Bethel Church. We appreciate God for each and every one of you, my father's children, those who are tuned in on seven different platforms. Uh, all the names of those platforms, I don't remember them all, but you know Roku and Hulu and streaming and Facebook Live and YouTube and Prayer Line and streaming. I think I mentioned streaming. Yeah, all of those places that you can get and plug in and receive the gospel. Uh, to those of you who are on uh, Facebook, God bless you. I see you there this morning. Every morning, some mornings I do it from YouTube or other platforms just to see others who are watching and viewing from all places around the country. We bless the Lord uh, for his grace and even to our friends who are viewing from India. Amen. We're blessed to uh, support uh, 10 women in India uh, who are matriculating now through a seamstress tailoring program and we'll be excited when they graduate uh, to uh, share in those graduation pictures. Pastor Joe uh, over there in Hyderabad, India, and doing an awesome work for the Lord, and we just appreciate them for tuning in. Uh, Presiding Elder Moses Achola says hello all the way from Kenya, and uh, he longs for the time when he'll be able uh, to come back and be here with us at the Union Bethel Church family, both here at Brandywine and Temple Hills, and we're thankful to God for that. Uh, as you heard, and you'll see the video uh, before the service ends, you'll see the video of uh, our county executive, Angela Also Brooks, and they have chosen uh, to launch their mobile test, uh, mobile vaccination site here with us this morning. And so they're going to be here, amen, 11.30 to 3.30, and uh, we'll be right here. And this is for 12 and up, 12 and up. And uh, if you haven't heard it now, about 97% of the new cases are from unvaccinated people. Amen. And so it is helping to get the vaccine out. And this is for 12 and up. And we're certainly uh, excited about that. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Reverend Erica. Uh, we thank God for that which has been covered. We want to keep in prayer. Also, Brother Ray Neal, whose grandmother went home to be with the Lord. Uh, grandmother will be uh, celebrating her homegoing celebration this Thursday. Uh, and we have that information. But let's go now into the Word of God. This is the lectionary reading from today that comes from Psalm 89, uh, beginning at verse 20. Psalm 89, the lectionary reading for today uh, is in Psalm 89, verse 20. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation, the Word of God. I have found my servant David. I have anointed him with my holy oil. I will steady him with my hand. With my powerful arm, I will make him strong. His enemies will not defeat him, nor will the wicked overpower him. I will beat down his adversaries before him and destroy those who hate him. My faithfulness and unfailing love will be with him. and By my authority, he will grow in power. I will extend his rule over the sea, his dominion over the rivers, and he will call out to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. For just a few minutes this morning, I wasn't bothering nobody. Amen, I wasn't bothering nobody. And for those uh, of the illustrious and uh, erudite educators uh, that are in the congregation would you please excuse the pastor from uh, the common English and allow me to speak in the Ebonic language in which we all communicate uh, because I'm sure even in spite of all the initials you have behind your name when I said I wasn't bothering nobody I think you did understand uh, you, you you do understand what I'm saying amen 
I wasn't bothering nobody and to our young people, uh, particularly those who are excelling in school, Brianna and all of all of y'all, uh, excuse Pastor C as I communicate in the Ebonic language. We want you to understand common English, but we also communicate very effectively in Ebonics. I wasn't bothering nobody. In this psalm that's in the third book, it's the last chapter of the third book of Psalms. And for our Bible students, let me remind you that Psalms is divided into five different books. Uh, this one, this psalm is supposedly written by Ethan the Ezraite. Uh, it is written either in response to the Egyptian invasion or the Babylonian invasion some years uh, later. Uh, we don't know which invasion it is in response to. The chapter opens up and deals with God's majesty, his power, and his faithfulness. Then God, uh, the chapter then moves to God's assignment of leadership in King David. Uh, but then it also moves a little further to help us understand that when we don't always follow everything like we're supposed to, we can find ourselves in a place where we don't think that God is still going to be faithful. But God's faithfulness never fails. Do I have a witness? God's faithfulness never fails. And when God deals with the assignment of leadership, King David, let me remind you parenthetically that God's kingdom does not accept applications and volunteers. Let me say that one more time. God's kingdom does not accept applications nor volunteers. God chooses who he wants to do what he wants, when he wants it done, and if we choose not to respond to his choice, he'll find somebody else. One monkey, don't stop, no show. When some are not around more, you know, and then and, 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 and let me pause also continuing this parenthetical thought. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when certain people are not present, we seem to get more done? Hello, somebody. Have you ever noticed, servants of God, that when you do it less, God does it more? <laughs> because we give him space to do what he does. The scripture says it is his doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. In other words, it's his hand, but our eyes beholding what God is doing. And so that latter part, as I indicated of the chapter, divided into three sections, uh, it helps us to understand when we don't follow God's commands and hence we don't see his faithfulness as we had desired to see it. Can we go on right into the text and walk through it for just a few minutes this morning? Amen. The first thing that I see in the text when we come into this spotlight in verse 20 is that God has made a decision. And so we conclude simply because we are reading it now uh, in the past that God decided. Uh -huh. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't bothering nobody, but God decided. <laughs> Uh, can I tell you something, beloved? All of God's decisions are already made. Let me say that one more time. God, all of God's decisions are already made. I don't think you got it in your spirit. I know you got that application in for a new job. You're re renew, trying to renew the contract that you have, but you need to be aware, beloved, that God's, all of God's decisions are already made. They were made so long ago that the world wasn't even formed. They were made before the foundation of, of the world. So watch this. Watch this. I'm going to mess with you today. God decided I'm going to mess with you today. I wasn't bothering nobody, but God made a decision. And he decided long ago. He decided before I became a reality. Watch this. Our prayers don't convince God to make up his mind. Oh, let me say that one more time in the Holy Ghost. Our prayers don't convince God to make up his mind because he's already made up his mind about what he has already done. He did it and now he's resting. What are we doing? He simply hit pause, press rewind, and he's running the video back through for any necessary edits along the way. I'm so glad. Thank God that God is the editor of our lives because there are some scenes in our lives that we certainly need brought it out. Do I have a witness here? Our prayers don't convince convince God to make up his mind. Well, what are we praying for? Here it is. Here it is. Our prayers touch his heart to allow mercy to guide his predetermined actions. 
Mm-mm. That's what the Holy Ghost said to me early this morning. Early this morning. I, mean, I was so excited about being able to host this uh, a vaccination site today to be a blessing to our people and to this community. And when I heard the Holy Ghost say this today, what if, if our prayers don't convince God to make up his mind, because his mind is already made up, but what do our prayers do? They touch his heart to allow mercy to guide his predetermined actions. Do, do I have a witness here? <laughs> you, you know, there were times when God said about some kings, I'm getting ready to take you out. And, and Hezekiah, for example, prayed to the wall and, and asked the Lord, and God comes back and says, I am going to take you out, but I'm going to give you 15 more years. In other words, I'm taking you out, and certain things are going to fall upon your generations, but I'm going to have a little mercy right now. My mind is still made up. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Mercy comes from the heart of God. Judgment comes from the mind of God. It comes from his will. In other words, when you violate his principles, this is going to be the consequence for your actions. Uh, however, if you know his heart, <laughs> he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into the knowledge of his truth. So I'm thankful that when my case should have received judgment, I had an advocate standing there in front of the judge saying, yes, he did do it. Yes, he is guilty. But yes, I tell you what, I'll substitute uh, his, uh, his penalty. I'll I'll pay the price for what he should have gone through if you just give him mercy. Ah, I'm so thankful for mercy because mercy suits my case. What God decides with his mind is final. But how God acts with his heart is to be determined. That's why it's so good to know the heart of God and not just the commandments of God. So God decided upon David. And guess what, beloved? God decided that you and I would live to see the day. <sighs> Hearts are grieving for that young six-year-old girl that got shot over in D.C. The other. Our hearts are grieving for the shooting we heard about last night, even while the baseball game is going on, and our hearts are bleeding for that. Can you imagine uh, what's on the mind and heart of God, his entire creation? God decided that you and I would live to see today, that we would not be the, the victim of a stray bullet, that we would not be the bystander in a wayward shooting. His, his, his heart and his mercy said, we're going to be here today. Now his judgment said, we should not be here at all, but his mercy says, we're alive. So God decided, God decided, he made a decision, and nobody can change his mind, and he, he decided. But then past tense, when we look back at the text, we see the introduction of this conversation about David, and I like this. Uh, God chose God decided, and, and then God chose. He, he chose David. And isn't it interesting, as I was sharing with the brothers yesterday, and I tell you, we had a wonderful time outdoors with our, our breakfast and everything, and I told them, I said, it had been a long, such a long time since it, we had preached to a, a live crowd. I just got excited out there. Uh, but what I was, I was getting more excited about is when I realized, as we talked yesterday, uh, do you know him? Do you know who? You're Abraham, and who is our father, that God that chose us for a specific purpose. You are created created for a purpose that exists before you are aware of yourself. Let me say that one more time. I, I didn't know whether I should say it in present tense or in past tense because it is still active. You are created for a purpose that exists or existed before you are or were aware of yourself. Before you knew you, God knew you, and he has a purpose for your life. Watch this in Ephesians 1 and 4. Write this down, Bible study students. Ephesians 1 and 4. Even before he made the world, 
God, first of all, loved us. Thank you, God. Thank you. He, that was a decision, by the way. God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. I just want to know, can I survey right now, uh, is there anybody out there who is truly holy and without any fault in his eyes? Not yet? Then God's still working on us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Predestination, and you hear this word, particularly in the King James Version, it simply means that God has a pre-designed destiny for each of us. He, 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 in other words, he fixes it up. This is the best way that Rodney's life is going to be lived. And then he goes to work because he realizes that we're going to be born into sin, that sin is going to attempt to disqualify us from the design and purpose of God. And so then God begins to work through us to introduce to us the bridge that's going to bring us from our sinful nature into our divine destiny because God is looking at the end and he wants it to come out a certain way. So he says, let me rewind the tape because I know Rodney is going to need some, some intervention. I know Reverend Eric is going to need some intervention. So I've got to bring my son Jesus in there so that I can change the course of what sin wanted to do and help them to realize what I had pre-designed them to do. Each of us is uniquely made. Sometimes, you know, we're frustrated because we don't know what we're made for. Most of the struggle in, in church is, uh, is from people who don't know why they are designed. Because when you know why you're designed, you just, you just live in it. I wasn't bothering nobody. I'm just living in my purpose. I, I wasn't bothering nobody. Problem is, are we coming to become disciples so we can discover why we're made? Or is the church just another social or civic organization and we put a check that we watched on Sunday, check, we sent in our tithes, and we keep on going along? Each of us is uniquely made. And sometimes we're frustrated because we don't know what we're made for. Have you ever met the frustrated usher at the door? Uh, 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 and you know she, she ain't happy. You don't know whether there's a bunions on her feet. You don't know what's the stress going on in her home, but they're, they're, they're mean at the door, and you come to the door and say, huh, here's a bulletin. You know, no, you can't sit down right now. You don't need to be there if you're that frustrated, and you don't understand your purpose. That's what, that's what David understood about the purpose and presence of God. He said, because I know God's heart, listen, I don't even have to be king. I don't have to be the prophet. I don't have to be the leader of God's host. I would just rather be a daughter doorkeeper for the opportunity to be where God is. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I just want to be where God is. So you know that the Lord chose you, but here's the question, but for what? And that's what the purpose of the church is in the earth, is to help all of its creation discover, watch this, one your relationship with the Creator. That's the first thing you discover. And then number two, to fulfill the Creator's purpose through, watch this, this is one and two, purpose of the church and the earth. This might come up on a quiz or a test. Purpose of the church and the earth, help all of God's creation discover, one, relationship with the Creator. First and most important thing, got to know who Jesus is. The brothers were saying yesterday, do you know him? Do you love him? And number two, fulfill the creator's purpose through, watch this, A and B. A, ministry in the church. B, mission in the world. Do you get that? If you want to know what the purpose of a church is, very simply, Jesus said it this way, just continue the work that I started. That's it. And what was the work that he started? He started to help people have a relationship with the Father, right? And then fulfill the Father's purpose through, watch this, my church, uh, I will build. No, no, no. You don't build. I build. Uh-huh. Uh, you, you, you don't build. I build the church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. One, relationship with the Creator. Two, fulfill the Creator's purpose through, A, ministry in the church, 
and mission in the world. So the question then is, uh, God gifted you, God anointed you, everybody has a purpose. What is my ministry in the church to the body of Christ? That's the ministry to the body. But then also at the same time, what is my mission in the world? And generally your ministry in the church reflects what your mission in the world is. Hello somebody. If you are an encourager and an exhorter and people love to talk to you because every time you talk to them, they get all built to, then that's, the, that's your mission in the world. You just change the venue from the body of Christ to the office setting. Hello, and when you get to the office, you can't wonder why all these people all the time want to come talk to me because you're an encourager. God anointed you to encourage people to see beyond themselves. And so watch this. Your ministry in the world reflects, your ministry in the church reflects what your mission in the world ought to be. Very simple. <sighs> In that great classic movie with Tom Hanks called Forrest Gump. Hey, Forrest, stupid is as stupid does. You remember when Forrest was sitting in the bed with mother, uh, or his mother was in the bed, she was sick, and he looks at her and he says, what's my destiny, mama? And what does she say? Forrest? You're going to have to figure that out for yourself. All I could do was bring you to it. Ah, but fortunately for us, we have a guide that will help us figure out what we are designed to do. And God bless the man, the woman, the boy, or the girl who has figured out what God wants them to do. Oh, the, one of the most dangerous things to the empire of Satan is when believers, not just shouters, not just praisers, not just singers, not just hollerers, you scream, not, I don't care how many titles you had, how many events you, you chaired, but when you realize why God created you and you come to understand understand that this is your divine purpose. Oh my God, that's when the enemy gets nervous. He gets nervous. The empire of Satan gets nervous because there is nothing more dangerous in the kingdom of God than a believer who knows why God has created them, who understands why God has anointed them, who, who, who perceives what God has called them to do because when you understand your anointing, when you understand and perceive the will of God for your life, you are dangerous and ain't no devil in hell can stop a believer who understands why God has anointed them in this day and in this age. We have a guy called Jesus. So God decided, God chose, I'm about finish. Number three, uh, save room in your notes because I got a four. God three, uh, part three, and as I shifted, I was, okay, we went from what God decided to what God chose, but now this is what God's going to do. Okay, so then I had to move my tense from past into, I think it's present, active, indicative, whatever they call it in English. Please forgive me if I don't have it correctly. Uh, uh, three, God stabilizes. Uh, no, 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 wait a minute. Remember where we're we going? God decided. Okay, that was past long before we got here. God chose, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without fault. Uh, and now that we're here, what's, what is the activity of God? God stabilizes. Look at verse 21. I love it, the A portion. It says, I will steady him with my hand. Uh, you, you didn't get it just then. You, you didn't get it just then. S sisters, let, 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 me, let me break it to you this way. Whenever you see the ancient text, it's written from a patriarchal point of view. So wherever you see him, you could put her, uh -huh, I will stable her with my hand. Uh -huh. Well, maybe you didn't get it. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's too easy. Let, let me go down to the young people. Uh, when, the, when, when God says, I got you, I got you, I will steady you with my hand. So you don't have to worry about the peer pressure to do something that, it, that you don't want to do. You don't have to worry about uh, taking opioids to deliver yourself out of the misery and pain of this world because you have somebody who will steady your hand. Do you know what it means to be steadied, to be able to walk through something? Let me get you right here, right now. God stabilizes. God's choice guides you, beloved, into God's purpose. 
Look at 89.19. Let me back up and show you this verse. I didn't start with this verse because I wanted to bring it in a little later. Watch this. Verse 19. Long ago, you spoke in a vision to your faithful people. Long ago. Uh -huh. You said, I have raised up a warrior. And then I noticed the tense. You, you spoke long ago. That's present tense. And now you, you said back then, I have raised. That means you've already done it. I have raised up a warrior. I have selected him from the common people to be king. All right. We know that's talking about David. Ezra, uh, the, the, the uh, Ethan, the Ezraite is writing about King David, his leadership. And, and, and so I had to stop because then I, I wanted to get a picture of how our lives are when God stabilizes us. All right. He, 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 he decided he, he chose us. Now, what does it look like when God stabilizes? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, do you realize that David went from shepherd to warrior? Mm. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. I, I don't think you got that. He, he, when we meet David over in 1 Samuel, uh, probably around chapter 16 and 17, probably back to 15, we'll see the family of Jesse coming into play. When we first meet David, he's a shepherd boy. <laughs> not, not just a shepherd, but a shepherd boy, if I can say it that way. And, and, and now here, uh, just a few uh, uh, episodes later, the psalmist is looking back and said, he's a warrior. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you said his resume said he was a shepherd boy. That's what it was. That's what it looked like in this world. But all the while, God was looking at a shepherd and saying, I see a warrior. <laughs> yeah, God is looking at you. He sees you not where you are, but he sees you for who he created you to be. And he, David went from shepherd to warrior. Can you imagine David out there in the first Psalm 17? You can go back and read it. Man, I always got to be out here tending these sheep. They stink. They smell. They all the time complaining. I know that sounds like church folk, but same, same thing. Um, <laughs> you, 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 they're always asking you for something. Yeah. Can you imagine the thoughts that David had? Uh, all my brothers are... Princes in my father's house, and some of them are off the war, and they, they look at me and say, boy, go out there and tend those sheep. And I'm out here tending sheep, and I can't imagine this, but can you imagine? Uh, fast forward when David takes lunch to his older brothers who are on the front line. Can you imagine what he sees and what he imagines? Uh, let me pause parenthetically right there. And when we talk about steady there are some places that God has decided and chosen for you to go that you alone can't handle. That's why you need him to stabilize you. Watch this. If you could handle everything along the way, then you wouldn't need God's help. Come here, Paul. I asked the Lord three times to take this thing out of my life. And he said, no, because if I take it out of your life, you'll figure out that you might not need me. And you need me every single step of the way. So for you, Paul, my grace is sufficient. If you can do it, then it may not be God's leading. It may just be your good idea, but it may not be God's idea. Because any idea that can be accomplished by yourself is not God's idea. Every God's idea, you need God to pick you up. You need God to empower you. You need God to hook you up. You need God to make it happen. And if God's not in it, it's not his idea. Steady, stabilize you with a support system that encourages and empowers you to do for God what God designed you to do. That's what it means to stay steady. And so I'm going to stabilize you. I'm going to stabilize you. So, 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 so watch this. Watch this. Uh, that's the kind of thing, and I thank God uh, for late uh, brother, brother Woodyard, Woodyard in it. And he, whenever I talk to him, God bless his soul. Yeah, he was always say, here's my coach. <laughs> coach, how you doing? I said, coach is doing all right. How you doing? 
uh, because he always would listen intently to the Saturday night message coach in the corner. This is the coach in the corner. My job is that when you pause on Sunday, when you pause and you come back to the corner, you, you got to get encouraged. You got to, uh, you got to be pumped up. You, 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 you got to have, you got to have your mouthpiece clean. You got to have your eyes white. Hello, somebody. And if the enemy has hit you real hard, you got to put some salve on those cuts and then somebody's massaging you and then you're rinsing out your mouth because it's been a hard journey all week long and so when you get out of the corner the coach is instructing you you got this you gonna handle this watch this watch the uppercut and when he comes that way don't back away step in and because your arms are shorter and when you come back in like Rocky told young Creed he said hit him with an uppercut and when he hit him with an uppercut it stung him that's what a coach does this is how you handle it come here David David said let me coach you as you walk through difficulties in life yea though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil why because I got a guy who is stabilizing me no matter what I'm going through thousand on my right ten thousand on my left but God keeps stabilizing me while I'm walking through that valley I will not fear. God stabilizes us. So, 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 so watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Can you imagine how David felt when he went down to the river to get those five smooth stones? Nowhere at this point had we seen his slingshot. <laughs> All we knew was that he had a staff because he was a shepherd. <laughs> but now we see that David's got something else in his shepherd's bag. You know, <laughs> you, you, you got another, you got, some, you, 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 you got some other stuff that can work in your bag. <laughs> can you imagine when David went down uh, to, the to the brook to choose out those five smooth stones. We don't know anything about his slingshot. We don't any know, know anything about stones. All we knew is that he had a rod and a staff, but now we realize David's got something else in his bag. He was just waiting for the right season to come along so he could manifest according to God's guidance in his life, and he said he chose that one stone. He said, yeah, I'm going to take this joker out with that. Woo, that's a good one right there. He put it in his bag, and he was about to walk away and the Holy Ghost said, remember Goliath got four other brothers that you might have to deal with a little later on. So David turns around and picks up more, the four additional stones, puts them in his bag. He says, I got five in my bag, but I ain't going to need but one because the Lord is stabilizing me. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. With my, and that brings me to this last point. Here we are. 89, uh, verse 89, I'm sorry, verse 21b, watch this, with my powerful arm, I will make him strong. Uh, let's just, just let me put you in there. With God's powerful arm, he will make you strong, sisters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, not only... Uh, does God decide it? That's past. God chose. Thank you for that. But now that I'm here, I need God to stabilize. So God stabilizes. Fourth and final observation is that God strengthens. This is we've only covered two verses. Verses, verses 20 and 21. God strengthens. We need more than our own human strength to accomplish divine purpose of God. Uh, how many of you know? How many of you know what it feels like when you work out in the gym? Yeah, you come out of that gym feeling strong. <laughs> you know, you done worked on your buys and your tries. You, you done exploded on the, on the bench press. Oh, man, you, you come out with that pump. And if you've had some, some NO, some nitric oxide with it, oh, yeah, you feeling real great. You feel real strong. You know what I'm talking about? You, you know, you, and, and so... Uh, if you if qualified for that license and you got that gun, oh, you feel superior. And it ain't no nothing coming against me that I can't handle. But, oh, when you get that degree, you feel educational power. Oh, that my God, I accomplish uh, my goals, and that's right. And you ought to feel good about all of those things. But watch this. Only God 
can give you strength to execute God's divine purpose for your life. Let me say it one more time. Only God can give you strength to execute God's divine purpose for your life. I don't have time to finish the text, but I'm sure you'll finish it in your own uh, viewing. Uh, when we talk about the arm of the Lord, we talk about God's right hand of strength. The right hand is the symbol of power. The right hand is the symbol of authority. The right hand is where God's strength is. And when God takes his hand and lays it upon you from your mother's womb, he has chosen you, my sister. He has chosen you, my brother. When his hand is upon you, that means God has already sealed the decision to give you strength to accomplish his will and to accomplish his work, his work in the earth. God's power is symbolized in action. It's what he's doing in your life. So watch this. Uh, God decided past tense. God chose past tense. But then God says, I will. That's right now. It's getting ready to happen. I will strengthen. I will stabilize. I will give you strength from day to day to help you get through. There's an old song, and I went to look it up. I don't know how to sing it too well. But an old song, and I thought it was a Negro spiritual all this while growing up. We used to sing this in Sunday school. Oh, 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 oh somebody touched me. Oh, 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 somebody touched me. Oh, 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 somebody touched me, and it must have been the hand of the Lord. You know that song, too? And I look for... The, the word Negro spiritual. <laughs> I couldn't find it nowhere. Y'all done, y'all people done took another one of our songs. I saw Bob Dylan. I saw Stanley Brothers. I'm like, I don't know none of who those people. That was our Sunday school song growing up. You know, kind of like Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, it didn't belong to that colonel in no white suit. That was a black woman that cooked that chicken. Y'all all, y'all already know. <laughs> Finally, as I close, my brothers and sisters. We saw young David tending sheep, and he was able to handle a lion and a bear. We see maturing David visiting his brothers at the front line, understanding that, watch this, if God, what did he say to them? What did he say to Saul? The same God that helped me with the lion, not, not the ones from Detroit, the same God that helped me with the bears, not the ones from Chicago. <laughs> it's the same God who's going to help me deal with the giants, not the ones from New York. He chose me because this was his decision. And right now he is steadying my hand to do what I have been assigned to do. And he's giving me the strength because my arms are too weak. My hands are too inefficient. My arms are not strong enough to bring to pass what God has ordered for my life. Beloved, you may be feeling a little weak right now. You may be feeling like you can't go on. But like we used to hear the old preacher say, when the preaching got good to the preacher, he would say, I feel my help. I feel my help coming on. And in case you haven't noticed it, brothers and sisters, you ought to be able to feel right now that your help is coming on. God didn't bring you 16 months through a pandemic just to leave you now. He's got a purpose for your life. And I know you're saying I wasn't bothering nobody, but God came to choose you and decided to use you for his glory. I don't know why God reigns on us the way he does. But I told the brothers yesterday, whenever God starts raining, put your umbrella away and just open your arms and receive whatever the Lord has I wasn't bothering nobody but late one Friday night God saved me and filled me with the Holy Ghost and told me to preach His word I wasn't bothering nobody you weren't bothering nobody when the Lord touched your life you weren't bothering anybody but God's got a purpose for you 
he made a decision he made a choice now i want you to just feel his strength feel him steady your steps he's not gonna leave you he's not going to abandon you lo i'm with you always i'm through i'm through i wasn't bothering nobody already made a decision he made a choice he chose me and he chose you and, and I know there are times when you feel a little weak yeah we all do but then watch what God actively does past tense he decided and chose but present tense I will stabilize and I will steady you I will strengthen you in other words, when you're up against the giants of COVID-19, you're up against the giants of racism. You're up against the giants of despair and discouragement. And I shared with the brothers yesterday out of 71 uh, funerals in this last 16, 17 month period. And uh, some of them uh, from COVID, not all of them, uh, some of them uh, suicide, some of them people too young, uh, a couple babies in there as well. And, uh, and that, uh, that's enough to make you just discouraged, isn't it not? But then God reminds us, I called you for this. I called you for this. If, if you're alive, God wants you to be here, which means the strength you need for the day, he's providing it right now. The steadiness that you need to make it through, he's doing that for you right now. But God, I, I, I don't know when my next contract is coming or when my next job is coming through. You're here, aren't you? That means he took care of you to get you to this present point. You ought to declare with holy boldness, I can because God did. <laughs> That'll preach but it by itself. I can because God did. Paul said it this way. I can do all things through Christ who what? Who strengthens me. I can because God did. What did he do? He decided and he chose me, which means whatever I'm supposed to, whatever I'm facing, I have what I need from him. He will stabilize me. Amen. And then he will strengthen. I need his arm to strengthen my arm so that I can do what he has assigned my hands to do all over let's pray right now father thank you for the opportunity to deliver this word i appreciate you for uh, those who are listening through the prayer line those who are listening uh, through the various means holy spirit we have delivered to your people uh, what you you laid on our hearts to deliver now it's up to you to do your work and uh, that your word would work in their lives uh, we weren't bothering anybody, but you you called, you chose, you decided. And we can't do this without you, so we need your stabilization. Steady our hands of God for the work. And then sure enough, we need your strength. And we sense your presence right now. And even as the old preacher says, we can feel our help coming on. Thank you for help and strength. In this time, strengthen now the feeble knees. Lift up the bowed down head. Heal those who have been broken. Oh God, those who have lost their joy, may they again draw water out of the wells of salvation with joy. God, to know that you are with us and that we can endure to the end. Thank you for this warrior, King David, that you showed us he wasn't bothering nobody. But you came and you took him from an unassuming life to now we took we look at the boy we called shepherd we now call him warrior thank you oh god for the example of how you moved in his life and god even for our own lives let us become those warriors for the king of kings and the lord of lords warring against covid 19 warring against poverty warring against illiteracy warring against financial uh, hardships warring against those who are downtrodden 
that need to be cheered up and lifted up. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's an conversation. We're about through. I want to come and just ask if there's anybody here you needed to be saved or you need a church home. You can join us virtually. How long are we going to be virtual? Well, at least another good while with all these statistics raising. And uh, we just came out of Florida, and everybody uh, that went to Florida has to have a COVID-19 test because we were exposed to seven variants. Seven different variants have been identified in Florida. And somebody said, well, why did y'all meet? And I'm just wondering that myself some days. But we thank God for it. You may need to be saved or you need, may need a church home. And if that's the case, we want to invite you to connect with us virtually. The information is going to be on the screen. You can call us and we'll get back to you immediately. Uh, you can email me, pastor C at ubame.com, dot org, I'm sorry. And uh, you can connect with us. And we'd love to have you no matter where you live, no matter what your geography is, what we're coming to understand in this season. Uh, that this, this uh, living organism called church is not about a location, it is about a relation. Did you get that? The, this organism called church is not about a location, it is about a relation. And so we thank God for that. So if you need that, we bless God for you. And thank you. We look to hear from you. We'll continue to pray with you and lift you up. Let's get ready to receive our t offering today. And for those who have not uh, given... And then we do have, you'll see our number on the screen, and then we do have further instructions about your giving. You can give in several different ways electronically. Uh, you can give through Givelify, Union Bethel AME Church. Uh, there's two of them, one for our Brandywine, one for our Temple Hills location. You'll see Union Bethel AME Church North, or you'll see Union Bethel AME Church, the building here. Uh, if you see my kind of a red ball head picture you got to the right place go on and give there we appreciate you for it uh, you can give at our website through realm even if you're a guest you can give that way www.ubame.org and then of course we have postage paid mail in envelopes thank you so much for continuing to mail in your support uh, people give literally around the clock literally around the clock we have people who go back and play a Bible study at 1 o'clock in the morning and then give at 2 o'clock in the morning. Amen. And, and so we just thank God for technology, which allows that word to go forth. And we thank you for that blessing. Many of us here, we like to lift up our phones when we consecrate the gifts uh, because many of us give through electronic means or otherwise. Father, we thank you for seed to sow. And we won't be unwise farmers and eat all of our seed. But we thank you that when... Uh, we weren't bothering anybody. You came to reveal your purpose for our lives. Thank you for setting us. Thank you for stabilizing us. Thank you for strengthening us today that we can continue to go forward in your work. In the name of Jesus and through the power of your shed blood. Now bless the seed and the sower, the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you're sowing that gift, receive now our UB News to update you on what's going on. And you'll get a chance to see the video uh, from uh, County Exec Angela Also Brooks. God bless you. It's our Union Bethel Next Facebook Top Fan of the Week, Sister Patricia Belgrave Hayes. Thank you for your engagement on this social media platform. Good morning, everyone. I'm grateful for the opportunity to join you today. I'm sure that after service, many of you will spend time with your family and friends. Time with loved ones feels even sweeter after the year we've all had. It's such a relief. Prince George's County was hit hard by COVID-19. After following the recommendations of the health experts, we're finally beginning to come through this storm. We've been blessed beyond measure. But to truly emerge from this pandemic once and for all, it is so important to get vaccinated and encourage your family members, neighbors, and friends to get vaccinated as well. Getting the COVID-19 vaccine is the best way to protect not only ourselves, but each other in our community. 
When I'm out in the community, I hear so many questions and comments about the vaccine, like, is it safe? Or I don't know whether it's been tested enough. But I want you to know that our Prince George's County health officials feel so confident about the science, about the research, and about everything that went into creating this vaccine. This vaccine works. It's extremely effective in keeping people protected and out of the hospital and nearly 100% effective in keeping people from dying from COVID-19. All over the country, we're seeing a huge drop in infection rates, hospitalization rates, community spread and deaths, and we're seeing people reunited with their family and enjoying their life again. This is because people are getting vaccinated. So I'm asking for your help. I'm asking you to talk to that family member or friend who's resisting the vaccine. Help them to get the protection they deserve. Prince George's County has vaccine clinics, mobile vans, and canvassers to make it as easy as possible to get a vaccine. Let's get protected and put this virus behind us so we can enjoy worshiping together again. If we don't get more of us vaccinated, we can be almost certain that COVID-19 will come back strong in the fall and hit hardest those who are not vaccinated. Thank you for allowing me to visit with you today. I'm grateful for your time. God bless you and God bless Prince George's County. Union Bethel is hosting Prince George's County for its faith-based mobile vaccination site. Residents in neighboring counties are invited to come out today, Sunday, July 18th from 11.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. to get vaccinated. We are located at 6810 Floral Park Road, Brandywine, Maryland, in Hawkins Hall. Face masks are required. The Union Bethel I Did It campaign was initiated to encourage and promote the COVID-19 vaccine to help protect against the virus and any new variances. Please schedule an appointment to get you and your family vaccinated. The Connectional Lay Organization of the AME Church presents the CLO Historical Journal. Information on how to order your copies, please contact your district lay organization president or visit www ameclay.org Continue to pray for our pastor, our first lady, our church family, and our nation. Now for the closing blessings and benediction. Amen. Praise the Lord. I trust that you heard uh, the message from County Exec also Brooks, and we thank God for her and for the team. They are already assembling outside, so we'll be down here from 1130 to 330. Would love to see you uh, in the place, children 12 and up, 12 and up, parents, this is the opportunity uh, for them to come and to be vaccinated. So God bless you and heaven smile upon you. You know what happens? I wasn't bothering nobody, but God decided God chose, and then God what? He strengthens, stabilizes, and steadies us to do what we've been called to do. Walk in the power of your purpose, and don't let any devil in hell tell you otherwise because you have power to do what God called you to do. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. I hope to see you in just a few moments. Thank you for tuning in to our virtual worship service. Join us throughout the week and next Sunday to hear God's spoken word. Have a safe and blessed week.